Good morning, and once again, welcome. Another Sunday, another week over. Where does the time go? I thought we'd start this morning with a word of prayer because some of our folk have been through different things this week that, that for some have been quite traumatic. So there have been instances um, of of crime around people that have been people that be in the hospital and so on and so forth. So I thought we just would take a moment just to pray for one another before we do anything else today. So let's just pray. We thank you, Lord, that you know us wherever we are, that you walk with us wherever we are, that your promise is that you'll never leave us or forsake us. Whether our life is filled with great things, things of joy, things of celebration, or whether we walk through the valley, you promise that you'll be with us. You promise that when things come in against us that seem to overwhelm us, the battle will belong to you. You promise that in the storm you will be there to say, peace, be still. And when we sink beneath the waves, you will be there to reach out your hand and lift us up. That when we grow weary and would faint, as we wait on you, you will renew our strength. and We will rise up with a renewed vigor and vitality and sense of vision to see what life can be in you. And we thank you for this promise that keeps us secure. And even though we are separated from one another, and even though we are limited in our contact with each other, and even though we can't really come together and be church in the way that we have for so many years, we thank you that we are still your body. We are still joined together in you. And this morning we pray for those who have been impacted by negative things this week, whatever they might be, that have been through difficulties, that have faced con situations that have challenged them and, and consequences of life that have challenged them. We pray that you would be more than they can think or ask and that they will know the love, the support, the care and the prayer of their brothers and sisters in you. We thank you, Lord, that each week we're able to pause and reflect on your word. Bless your word to us today, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And a reading, if you like, from the Psalms, Psalm 150. It says this, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute or the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and the dance. Praise him with the strings and with the pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And of course, for any of us that have been around church any length of time, immediately we're going, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Exactly. It's amazing the power of worship and music in worship, isn't it? I've got to think in this week, what does it mean to worship God? Because with the news that we will in the next few weeks be able to have church open again, we'll be able to look at getting back into church, and we're still waiting for final sort of confirmations about what we can and can't do. We'll let you know about that as soon as we do. But along with that news came the suggestion that when we come back to church, we might not be able to sing. And for our style of worship, that's quite a challenge, isn't it? And it got me thinking, what does it actually mean to worship God? Because we are called to worship him. We are called, as the psalmist says there, to praise him, to praise him in his sanctuary, to praise him in his heavens, to praise him sort of in the, the things that man has created, and to praise him in nature, in the things that God has created. We are called to worship him, to bring our praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Come, let us worship the Bible says, let us bow down, kneel before the Lord. We're told to worship him in the beauty of holiness. But what does it mean? What is involved? Because I do think because of the style of our church, because of the style of our, our worship and, and our expression of worship, for us, most of the time, we think about worship and we think about it as singing. We think about it as coming together. Our pattern of church coming together to vocalize our worship that is 
we're, we're kind of predicated, we're built on that idea, aren't we? And, and I wouldn't want to see that change. I mean, I love singing. I'm not sure that everybody else loves me singing, but now there was no need for that. <laughs> but I do, I love singing. I think the power of words and music, it's so expressive, it captures the emotions, but also it can express vision and heart and desire, and, and it's, it's very powerful. I mean, just the fact that a tune will stay with you and that you find yourself sort of waking up with it running through your head or you're going about your business in the day and, and just you're whistling or humming it away to yourself, you know? I think it's really, really important that we understand the power of good music and good lyrics to express our worship. It's not just um, singing, though, is it, that we are sort of inclined towards. We also believe in the expression of the gifts of the Spirit. We also believe in open prayer and so on. And very much our worship is about being vocal. So the suggestion that you can come back to church, but you can't be particularly vocal, mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where that's going to leave us. Because if they're saying that we can't do that, and if that's all that worship is, um, well, we might be in trouble. We might be in trouble when it comes to preaching as well. I mean, I'm not entirely sure that if we can't sing, we'll be, be able to preach. And if you say that would be no bad thing either, there will be very real trouble. Because you see, apparently it's all about the projecting of droplets. <laughs> the way you sing, you project the droplets. Well, you know, let's be honest. We've all sat there and listened to a preacher where we've been thinking, say it, don't spray it, Pastor. Yes. <clears throat> but it did get me thinking about worship because we do kind of take it for granted that we can play someone else's tune sing someone else's words amen someone else's prayer and that's worship don't we and that's not wrong and i mean and when we come back together in all likelihood we will use videos and so on so that there is a musical element to our worship but it got me thinking today, what if we can't, and, and as seems like, what if we can't just do what is our, our normal, our default, our familiar expression of worship? What if we have to find our own worship? What if we have to find our own expression of worship? What might it look like? In John chapter 4, it says, the Lord is spirit, and he is looking for, he is is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth what does it mean to worship the lord in spirit very often again we kind of put that down to the gifts of the spirit and so on but is it is it that limited you know one of the one things i've been wondering is whether we have become too limited in our understanding of what worship and praise can be and when we say we worship the Lord in the Spirit, does that just mean that sort of ecstatic, gifts of the Spirit sort of experience? Or is there more to it than that? I actually think there is. I think that what is being talked about there is a desire that Jesus has that I will open myself so that he, the Holy Spirit, can lead me. But if we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit in worship and say, lead me into a place where I am worshipping, where might he take us? What might he show us? How might his brooding heart for the world soften me to the needs of my fellow man? And in that, if we're honest, can be a little scary to let the Holy Spirit just take us wherever he would have us go and yet that's exactly what it means to worship the lord in spirit it is to say i want to worship you lord holy spirit how can i express this and let him instead of just singing someone else's song or just saying amen to someone else's prayer let him inspire within us our expression of praise our expression of worship and to do it in truth to do it in truth what does it mean to worship in truth? I mean, that's quite a scary thought, isn't it? That honesty is a part of worship. Because when, especially when we are in corporate worship, we do put on a, um, you know, an appearance, don't we? <laughs> Lord is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth. 
In Romans 12, verse 1, it says, Offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Not a mention of a song. Not a mention of a prayer. When Paul writes that in Romans 12, he's talking about the transformed life that reveals Jesus to those who are around us. James chapter 1, verse 27 says, Religious, true religious worship that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Again, no mention of music, no mention of songs. No. And I think there is a danger that when we, we think about worship within the context of church, and particularly within the situation of our tradition, we think about worship and we always tie it into music. We always tie it into prayer. We always tie it into uh, maybe clapping hands or whatever. But we tie it into that sort of activity. There's a danger that we miss the point that to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth is to go way beyond that. So that it, is, it goes beyond the singing of songs and into a place where we present our lives a sacrifice to God that is acceptable and pleasing to him by our words, our mind, our, our thoughts, our actions, our heart, our attitudes, that we care for people. I mean, get this, the care of those who are in distress, the care of those who are disenfranchised, the care of those who are disconnected with society, the care of those who are needy is worship as is keeping yourself from being polluted by the world how, how easy is it to get polluted by the world you watch telly for a couple of hours and you start thinking yeah hebrews 13 verse 15 says through jesus let us continually offer to god a sacrifice of praise yeah good that isn't it yeah and of course immediately we're thinking yeah let everything that has breath praise the lord singing again isn't it except that the writer of hebrews goes on to say the fruit of lips that openly profess his name jesus said you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses and actually being a witness professing his name openly acknowledging that we are his disciples acknowledging i am a follower of jesus that is worship it isn't just proclamation it isn't just evangelism it's worship it may well do us no harm at all to have the familiar form of worship denied to us for a while you know if it means we confront in spirit and in truth what it means to worship in these other ways and we need to challenge ourselves to make real worship without hiding it behind doing worship. Yeah. Because no matter what form it takes, worship of God isn't something we do and then it's over. We gather together at whatever time. What time did we meet? Has anybody got an old calendar so we can remember what time the services were at? It isn't that we gather together, we do worship, and then it's over. The biblical pattern, and all those passages I've just read to you, the biblical pattern is very clear. It is a continual, ongoing thing. We don't do worship and it's finished. It's something we develop. Worship in our life is something that grows. It becomes a living sacrifice. It becomes a continual thing. It becomes a life pattern. Now, we can't spend every day going around singing. Well, I do, but you know what I mean. So we have to start to recognize that these other things that we can take on board in our lives, these other things are there so that we might express our worship in spirit and truth. And we need to be developing that, not just doing it occasionally, but actually letting it grow and nurturing it and developing it in our lives. David illustrates that in that psalm that we read, 
It's Psalm 150. It's the very last one. And he says, praise the Lord, worship the Lord. And it's worship the Lord wherever you are. Worship the Lord in his sanctuary, in church. Worship the Lord in the heavens and in his nature and in life and the world that is around us. Worship the Lord. Worship him for his greatness. Worship him for who he is. Worship him for what he's done. Recognize the power and the majesty and the wonder of God and worship him. And although David is a musician and he puts it into musical terms, it isn't just, and David's like, was apparent than that it isn't just about music but he is a musician and so he uses musicians ideas to make a very important point because you read through that psalm and you kind of think trumpet loop harp timbrel dance cymbals big cymbals etc etc you kind of think well that's just you know a collection of musical instruments but there's more to it than that because David is, is one of those musicians who understands you know, you get them sometimes, don't you? Our Ian's a bit like it. There are musicians, and give them half an hour with an instrument, and they'll they'll get a tune out of it, yeah? And then there are, you know, ordinary mortals like me. But the reason they're like that, of course, is because they work at it. And they do, and I listened to our Ian play at Matthew's Wedding, and I thought, oh, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. Oh, I'm loving now. I wish I could play like that. Because the difference is, he works at it, and... Anyway, we'll move on quickly. But David here is understanding the, the importance of development of skill when it comes to worship. And so he starts with the trumpet. And when he starts with trumpet, I mean, don't think Louis Armstrong. It's not that's what the trumpet. He's talking about the shofar, which is basically a great big animal horn that has been hollowed out. And then they've put a mouthpiece on one end of it and they blow it. And it, it sounds like a cow bellowing. You, you've seen the videos maybe and so. But it, it's not, I mean, undoubtedly there is some skill. But it's skill like, you know, the Vuvuzela. It's, it's, it's skill like making a loud noise. That's the skill of it, primarily. I don't want to be disparaging to those who play it, but you know what I mean. It's not intricate. It's not gentle. It's not... doesn't require sort of finesse to do it. So he starts with that, and he says, praise him on the trumpet with just a loud noise. But then he goes, but praise him on the lute. Delicate little guitar-like thing with just a few strings. And it takes some skill and some practice and so on to be able to play this thing properly and then praise him on the harp he says and once again you've got a stringed instrument but it's got more strings to it and you know i wouldn't know where to start with a harp would you I, yeah I, mean, I know you pluck the strings but when you start to pluck the string what does that do what, where, where does that take you and so on. and again it is about a level of skill about a level of refinement about a level of development and he takes that through because it goes through the the lute the harp the timbrel or the tambourine now if you think a tambourine's easy to play you're not playing it right I mean, that's the truth of it, you know. By the time you're shaking it and banging it, and uh, you've got to stay in time, and and so and and it was a it was like a really really important instrument in the time of David in the expression of worship and of dance, and so that's why he ties the two things in together because the tambourine and the dance go hand in hand, as it were, and the steps of the dance and the rhythm of the tambourine and the the whole sort of action. And I haven't a clue what I'm doing when I'm doing this. Is that what you do? I don't know, is that what you do? But the whole idea of it, again, was skilled and it was developed. Do you see where we're going with this? He goes, praise him with the symbols, the little ding, 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 ding symbols. Praise him with the big symbols. Crash, bang, wallop. And the whole point of what David is trying to get across in that song is that worship isn't something you just do one way. Isn't something that just has one sound isn't something that just has one level of skill and finesse and development and refinement and so on. He says worship is about growing and developing and taking on skill and creating a sound that is varied and multifaceted and covers different elements of life and glorifies God. And we may not be able to worship as we would like and as we are used to when we go back to church. But the truth is, that might do us good. 
because worship isn't a few minutes in church it is our breath it is our life it is our being let everything that has breath praise the Lord profess his name look after orphans and widows keep oneself from being polluted by the world present yourself a living sacrifice totally dedicated to serving God in every area of your life holy there's that word holy and pleasing to God in spirit led by filled with governed by ruled by the Holy Spirit and in truth honesty integrity faithfulness call of scripture to us is to do more than perhaps most of us have done when it comes to worship all our lives because we have sold ourselves short I believe by making worship just about what happens in church and just about singing a few hymns or worship songs the call to us is to build and develop and practice and refine and create the beautiful music of life worship to pervade all areas of our lives and to honor him so if we come back to church and we can't sing that doesn't mean we can't worship because worship is about a life lived in spirit and in truth so let everything that has breath praise the Lord amen let's pray we thank you for the ability Lord to praise you with singing we thank you for the skills you've put in our church that enable us to have music played so that we can sing to it we thank you that it doesn't matter how good or bad a singer we are when our heart desires to praise you in song your heart is thrilled to receive it but I thank you today Lord that your word makes clear that worship of you is more than just praise him on the trumpet the psaltery and harp worship of you is our life it is not being polluted by the world it is presenting ourselves as servants to your kingdom it is caring for those who are in need as you did it is honoring your name it is taking up our cross and following you it is in fact living a life of worship where honoring and serving and pleasing you pervades all areas of what we do help us to see that even in lockdown the worship of our life music can be pleasing to you and give us the courage to open ourselves to your spirit that we may take a long hard look at what we do and wonder is this really worshipping the God whom I love in Jesus name Amen <laughs>